Michael J. Fox and Tracy Pollan had been married for over three decades, which is a huge deal, especially in the scandalous world of Hollywood. The couple has been the definition of strength since their lives were turned upside down three years into their marriage. While Pollan and Fox had an on-screen romance and family ties, a real-life relationship didn't blossom right away. I'm 22, and, and my energy's right now focused on, on my career, and, and I'm just trying to set up the base for my life. At the time, Tracy was going steady with 80s heartthrob Kevin Bacon. The two had met five years earlier while doing a play together and shared an apartment in New York and a farmhouse in Connecticut. Pollan regularly commuted back to the East Coast from LA, where Family Ties was filmed. I fly home to Kevin the second filming shuts down, she said. We will probably marry, but I feel like we're kids still, and marriage is such a grown-up thing. Meanwhile, Michael had become one of the biggest stars in Hollywood thanks to Back to the Future, so life had become a whirlwind for him with movie offers pouring in. And so Back to the Future had just come out, and I thought, well, I better go watch it because I have no idea like, yeah, who he is and what if he, you know. Really? So I went by myself, I sat down at the theater on 86th Street and I saw it and I thought, oh, this guy actually like maybe has a future. <laughs> <laughs> Moreover, he was in a long-term relationship with actor Nancy McKeon. I always thought Tracy was cool, Fox said years later, but it was like a couple of married people who worked together and liked each other. Fox and Pollan's relationship is said to have blossomed on the set of the movie Bright Lights, Big City, not long after Lemon Sky, the movie on which Bacon met the love of his life, Kira Sedgwick, premiered. It sounds really horrible, but it was one of those things, the actor said. Someone goes, did you hear that so-and-so aren't together anymore? And you go, hmm, that's too bad. Where's the phone? Michael and Tracy started dating, and seven months later, he proposed. At the time, the young star admitted that he was most nervous about the wedding's secrecy. I wasn't really worried that she would say no, he recalled. The toughest part was trying to figure out when to get married and then to figure out how nobody else could know about it. They had cause for concern. Pollen and Fox had started to get threatening letters, up to 15 a day, in February 1988. The frightening messages prompted the actor to tighten security everywhere he went, and Pollen started using an alias when she traveled. Soon after, the accused threatmaker pleaded guilty to three counts of making terrorist threats and was sentenced to three years of probation in order to stay away from the family. And the couple was determined not to put their lives on hold. Despite their best efforts, though, the paparazzi sent helicopters to crash their wedding day. But of course, that did not stop the happy couple from having a good time. When Pollen got pregnant, Fox squeezed Lamaze classes into his shooting schedule. We did the whole womb music deal where we put the headphones on Tracy's stomach and played everything from Vivaldi to the Allman Brothers. And what do you know? Life was about to blindside the couple, though not in a way they could have ever prepared for. Two years after they welcomed their boy, Fox was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease at the very young age of 29. I mean, I, I thought I'd hurt my shoulder because uh, I had a twitch in my pinky and I thought I'd hurt my shoulder doing some stunt or something. And, um, and uh, the doctor said, you have, you have Parkinson's disease. You, you, he said, the good news is you have about 10, 10 years of work left. While on location filming Doc Hollywood, he began to notice trembling in his fingers and hand. The trembling was the first symptom of early onset Parkinson's, an incurable degenerative condition of the central nervous system that affects motor function over time. When it happened, he told Tracy that it was going to be okay, but he was actually freaking out. I had no idea what Parkinson's was, and I was in denial. You've probably read in People that I'm a nice guy, but when the doctor first told me I had Parkinson's, I wanted to kill him. I thought, what a shitty thing to say to somebody. I just knew it was a mistake. It's been more than 30 years since the day he had to break the news to his wife, but the memory of her reaction is still enough to move him to tears. We didn't know what to expect, Fox said. One of the things I'll always love Tracy for is that at that moment, she didn't blink. At the time, no one could really tell, so he opted not to share the news outside a trusted inner circle. His family handled it quietly, but eventually Fox fell into a depression and started drinking heavily. It would be a while before he got a handle on his new reality. Fox's drink of choice was wine, sometimes by the bottle, and he began to hide the bottles from Tracy. But Pollen knew what was going on, and his drinking and dark mood caused friction between the couple. 
Well, I mean, I used to drink to party, but then I was drinking. Now I was drinking alone and just drinking to just not be every day. Every day. So you were self-medicating. Yeah. Fox's moment of reckoning came when Pollen found him one morning, passed out on the floor. She didn't get angry. Instead, she looked bored, asking him, Is this what you want? Is this what you want to be? Pollen then walked out the door. I didn't scream. I didn't... I wasn't angry. I was kind of feeling done. He realized he had no choice but to take life one day at a time. After that, he recalled, Tracy said to me, you showed up again. Your sense of humor was back and you were just there. Pollen said she had tougher days than others, but those were mainly when he seemed unsure of what she was going to do, which manifested in his erratic behavior. Through it all, we've loved each other, Fox said, and that love never died, Pollen added. We had a solid foundation to begin with. And in 1998, Fox finally went public about his disease. After undergoing brain surgery to help relieve tremors caused by the condition, the actor publicly revealed that he had Parkinson's. I took seven years between when I was diagnosed and when I went public with it. So I, I took a long, selfish period of time when I, I just dealt with how it affected me and, and was concerned with me and an accident on me. It was a shocking moment for anyone who counted themselves a fan of the star or who even just remembered him as the forever young Marty McFly and a turning point for Parkinson's visibility. From that day forward, Fox became the celebrity face of the cause, and he and Pollen have worked tirelessly since then to raise money for research and awareness. They launched the Michael J. Fox Foundation, which has become the largest nonprofit funder of Parkinson's research globally. So far, they've raised nearly $1 billion to speed a cure for Parkinson's disease. Fox had to endure some difficult stretches with his condition, and Pollen's sense of humor had helped a great deal. She's there in the front lines with Michael every single day. It's great. You know, I love working with Michael, and um, we're very simpatico. Well, Tracy's amazing, he said. If there's something funny, let's get to the funny. We'll deal with the tragic later, she says. He really needed her support in 2018, when his trademark optimism waned during one of the darkest periods of his life. First, Fox underwent spinal surgery to remove a tumor, which forced him to relearn how to walk. Then, four months later, he suffered a fall in their home and shattered his arm. I was underneath the phone, on the kitchen floor, alone with a broken arm, waiting for the ambulance to show up, he said. I couldn't believe the amount of fury I had toward myself for being so careless to do this and to let down my surgeons. But ultimately, he realized that one could be a realist and an optimist at the same time. If you don't accept it, you can't move forward. It's just, and then, and then it's just, I'm so lucky. I'm so, I, I mean, I've got this beautiful wife and these great kids and, 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 and life is just good. Fittingly for a man with five Emmy Awards, watching television helped restore his positive outlook on life. He binge watched old Westerns from the 50s and 60s while recovering from his broken arm. I kind of realized that this happened before I was born, these shows, he said. I'm part of that continuum. I'll be survived by my reruns. That gave me a bit of a dash of immortality, and they all pointed me towards how grateful I was for my interaction with my kids. Two years after the accident, Fox celebrated the 20th anniversary of the Michael J. Fox Foundation. They started the foundation literally with nothing, and now they're responsible for 17 active therapies that are being used that were never thought of before. And the Michael J. Fox Foundation will do whatever it takes to speed a cure for Parkinson's. This is our 20th year. If we knew it was going to be 2020, we would have started a year earlier or a year later because this year really blows, he quipped. Fox also retired from acting due to the effects of living with Parkinson's. He previously retired at 40 and he threw his energy into his foundation, but he later returned to acting, guest starring on The Good Wife and Rescue Me, the latter of which earned him his fifth Emmy. TV and film aside, Fox has regained his optimism and literally takes life one step at a time due to his condition. You have to plant your heel and shift your hips and transfer weight. I mean, all this mechanical biokinetics you have to go through just to get a cup of coffee across the room, he said of his life now. But if every time you risk falling, every step is precious. He shared that constantly being asked how he's doing can get a little tiresome, but he hasn't let it dampen his outlook on life. Optimism is a choice, he added, but in a way, it isn't. There's no other choice. I don't think there's any other viable choice than to hope for the best and work toward it. 
uh, when, when you have gratitude, uh, optimism is sustainable because you, you, you keep coming back to your gratitude. And, and part of gratitude is acceptance. When Oprah Winfrey asked if he felt Parkinson's had been a gift for their marriage, giving them no choice but to become stronger and more in sync, if they were to keep on going, Fox said, I've often referred to Parkinson's as the gift that keeps on taking. It's a gift in that it really gave me a whole different appreciation for life. It hasn't allowed me to take anything for granted. Date nights for the couple still include trips to the Emmys and the Oscars, but he and Pollen make a point of enjoying each other's company everywhere whether it's in another country or on the couch watching TV. And they deal every day with Fox's condition, but always together as a team. That's all we have for you today, juicers. As always, thanks for choosing us. Spread the word, and don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell for more celebrity stories. And we'll be right back. Be well and be kind.